Today I'm going to take you through my uh, Notion shared household film and TV watch list. And the reason that I use Notion instead of one of the watch lists available on like IMDb or Letterboxd or even directly in the streaming services is that I don't want to see everything possibly available to me in the world. I want to be able to just see the subset of the subset of the subset of things that I'm interested in and I care about. And I share this with my partner so you, you're kind of getting a, a way to manage things that I want to see, things that they want to see, and then the things that we both want to see. And it's just not something that I've found possible in other watch list services, but I'd love to hear if I might have been missing something and I'll have a look at the alternatives at the end and where I think there are kind of pros and cons. But first, let's see the Notion setup that I have. So it's a database type of page. So it's just not a database within a page, just this is the database. The easiest way to understand how Notion databases work is to see the table view. And you can see that it's just a list of film film and, and TV shows that I've added various different kinds of metadata to. And again, the reason I like Notion is it's so customizable. Like at the beginning, all I had really was the title and the type, whether it was TV and movie. But then over time, I've added like, oh, OK, what platform can I see this on? What kind of tags or like genre is this thing? What are my notes? Like who recommended this to me? How many minutes does it go for? What's the IMDb rating? And those kind of things. So you can kind of build it out over time based on what you care about and what you care about won't be the same things that I care about. So if we spin across to the first tab, this is where I've got a filtered view based on anything that's not a Christmas film because that's a very special type of film that I don't want to see year round. And because it's watched together, I want the who wants to watch to contain both myself and my partner. And because this is the TV filtered view, I only want to see the type of items that are set to TV. So with those filters on, this also sorts based on the Rotten Tomato Tomatoes rating, if I've included that, and then what day of the week it comes out. So you end up with this kind of view. Actually, the other way that I've set this up, it's a le gallery layout. I've just used the small card sizes because I want to be able to see more on a page. You can do large like this, but um, I prefer being able to see more at once. And then I've grouped it by priority. So I've got these groups of what I'm currently watching, what's next in line, what I've seen before, maybe put on pause and could come consider coming back to, the someday list, the ones that are waiting for new episodes to be released, and then the ones we've already seen. So this becomes the list that my partner and I can go to when we're choosing what to watch of an evening. Like, what are we currently watching? Well, currently there's a lot of political comedy with the Johns, John Stewart and John Oliver. White Lotus season two has just come out. We're working on City on a Hill, although I have to say season three, not quite as good as season one and two, but eh, it's okay. Chef's Table Pizza is uh, quite a fun journey through different pizza connoisseurs and restaurants around the world. It's sort of like a travel meets pizza show. And The Future Of is a documentary series on Netflix that is super cool. Like you can learn about the future of houseplants and what we have in store. Like can they store our data? Wild. And so, yeah, this becomes the kind of quick list for us to choose from or remind ourselves what we're watching, even if it's across different streaming platforms. And then it kind of goes through priority. So the, the top hits are at the top. And then if we've got, you know, an evening where we want to try something new, we might pick from something on the someday list um, or something we've seen before. So then if it's movie night, we're like, we don't want a TV show. We want to watch like a full movie. Then we go into view number two, where the only difference is that rather than filtering for the TV options, it's filtering for movie options. And so here we'll see what are the things we've talked about wanting to watch together. Um, maybe if we worked out what platform they're on, it'll say that too. And then again, the sort of eventually someday list, which is very long. Then we come to the personal list. So this is the stuff that I want to watch that Aaron specifically does not want to watch. And so I can um, filter this view based on what I'm currently watching. Actually, Aaron is watching this one with me, so I can add Aaron to that 
and it will bounce across to that other list. I'll, I'll usually put in some notes of like, why is this on my list or what's something that I wanted to remember in case the title isn't enough. And then my someday list, look, honestly, I don't even know if I'll get to all of these, but it's just my reminder of things I've thought in the past, like, oh yeah, maybe, maybe if I'm in a cheesy mood, I'll watch Spring Breakers or what have you. So then Aaron has his own list. The ratings view is where they are sorted by the Rotten Tomatoes rating. So where I've bothered to put this in, this is a nice way to kind of see what do other people think we should watch. And so the really highly rated films will be up the top and then it sort of works works its way down lower and lower as you go. So that could be another fun way in. Or maybe you want to watch something that's rated really lowly and have a laugh at that. Again, with any of these views, you can kind of go in and choose what properties to show. So you might want to see the IMDb rating alongside Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, and then if you do a sort, you could add the sort IMDb, put it in descending so it goes from highest to lowest and then save. So it doesn't actually look like I've been adding that in yet. That was an aspirational field. But as you add that in, you can then see like, how does one rating system compare to the other? The year the film came out can be fun if you then want to look at, for example, all films that came out most recently, you'd say descending. And then you'd say, oh, okay, there's a couple of new films. Maybe we should prioritize those if we want to be hip and cool. So yeah, these are the different views. And then Christmas time, the Christmas favorites, obviously Die Hard is probably just gonna get a rewatch, but in case we change our mind, there are some other options we can add to this through the year. And then if you wanna go back to seeing all the data and, and sort by different things, you might wanna go in here and just group by the tags and show me all the documentaries up the top. What are some documentaries that we've said we wanna see and that kind of thing. Yeah, so it's it's super fun to play around with. And uh, I guess, yeah, what I, what I really most recommend about it is that you are choosing what to put in there and you can choose when to take things out again. The algorithm isn't choosing for you, but you are creating almost your own algorithm and you can choose what kinds of fields are relevant, how you wanna be able to sort and filter. And then you can share for that Venn diagram. I can imagine even using this in a, share house full of five six seven people and and being able to have like that crossover of like show me everything that we all want to see so just for comparison i do have a letterboxd account which is one of those services that compiles films from different uh, streaming services and you can create this kind of watch list i do like this in the way that you can then go in and see all right who of my friends have seen this what did they say about it? What are other people, how do other people rate it? Um, what's the cast? How, where can you watch it? Like you do get a lot of information and these kind of reviews from the public, maybe people that you don't know. I, I think it does have a place and I do have an account which I refer to sometimes, but it's probably more like I'll come in here to log the things that I really, that I really enjoyed and I'll write a review about them like Sicario was one we watched the other day and I'll say, oh look, having loved June, Arrival and Blade Runner, it's no su surprise that I vibed with this Denis Villeneuve gem as well because they've all got the same energy. Like sometimes when I'm feeling inspired, I might go in and share just the stuff that I really love really makes it onto here. And then that can help find sort of recommendations off the back of those things that I loved. So might have a place, it's a free service. But again, it's another sort of data entry point. Depends how much time you have and how much value you get out of it. Maybe how many people you have sort of who might be connected on there. I imagine it becomes more valuable the more letterbox friends you have. And then the next one that's been recommended to me is IMDB. I signed up for an account and just added one to my list just to see how this works. It's pretty dinky. I got spammed with a lot of ads on the way through the setup process. And it's, look, honestly not a very attractive user interface but again it's probably similar to letterbox that it might offer recommendations and, and other ways to sort of discover content that that could be interesting i could possibly consider using this down the track but currently the the notion setup for me is working like a dream and i guess the added benefit is on my phone i just open up 
the the widget the notion widget that I have and I can very easily sort of scroll and navigate these things in in the phone view which is let's be honest how I'm typically looking at it when I'm on the couch or out and about and someone recommends a film or a TV show to me so yeah that's my that's my notion watch list I say mine I mean it's as much Aaron's as it is mine but I think I tend to be the gardener of the list and, and try to remember to put things in and I do find that it gives us an avenue for picking something when our brains aren't working and then sometimes we'll go rogue and we'll ignore the list and see what the algorithm serving us or you know try and find some other off book method for for selecting something to watch but for times that you don't want to have to rely on your brain of like who recommended that film and what is our little subset of of all possible films to watch that is just relevant to us then this method really works for me any questions let me know and still gunning for those hundred subscribers so if this is of any interest and maybe some of the other digital tool tips and how to's might be of interest to have a think about subscribing or share this with a friend thanks so much bye